Two of the most powerful things you can implement in your strategy is the BATN and the WATNA. The BATN and the WATNA. So what do these stand for? This comes from the Harvard Negotiation Project. So the BATNA stands for the best alternative to negotiated agreement. The best alternative to negotiated agreement. And the WATNA stands for the worst alternative to negotiated agreement. So I'll tell you a couple stories around the BATNA and the WATNA. Had a great agent that worked for me. His name was Neil Moffat. Fantastic guy. So Neil comes to my office one day and he says, I am so angry. He was fired up. He's like, I'm angry. So what's the problem, Neil? He said, I went in and I showed a house in Laurelwood, beautiful old historic district of Roseburg near the river. My buyers wrote an offer at uh, 300,000. This house is listed at 310. And they rejected the offer with no counter. And he was mad. He was very upset. I said, well, uh, you know, is there any other houses for sale in the neighborhood? He said, no. I said, is there any for sale by owners in, for sale in the neighborhood? No. Is there any expired listings recently? No. Hardly ever would a listing come up. It was just a highly desirable area. We've had some areas like that in, in Medford. I said, so, well, can you get your buyers to go look in a different area? Let, let go of Laurelwood, go find something else. Go to a different neighborhood. He said, they won't do it. They are dead set on being in Laurelwood. And I said, well, guess what you're going to have to do then? You're going to have to do what? Pay 310. There is no option. So you know why there was no option? They did not have a good BATNA, best alternative to negotiated agreement. Uh, many, many times your buyers come in thinking they can negotiate hard, but they have no alternative. They have no BATNA. These buyers had no BATNA. Now, if they had a strong BATNA, a strong second choice, they can negotiate hard, right? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So we have to educate our buyers about, hey, you don't have any other alternative here, so be careful what you're doing here. So I'll give you an example. So Sky is working with me as a buyer. We find her the perfect house, and she says, I want to offer two fifty on a $300,000 house. <laughs> totally understanding we get the best deal possible, Sky. I get it. You got to help me out here. We got to be able to sell this to the other side. The other thing I want you to think about a little bit is we've, we've looked at houses for three weeks. This was the best of the best. And if we don't end up with this house, are you comfortable with the second choice? Because I don't think you are. No. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so we got to ask ourselves when we're writing this offer, we don't want to put ourselves in a position of potentially losing it because we don't have a great second choice.